Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs and a sponsored video series from GarageKit.us Colors. Now in this video, we're still working on the Haruka Fire Elemental Kit and we're gonna be focused on clear resin and going over some do's and don'ts, some things that you really kinda of, kind of think about with clear resin and also just uh, get you a little bit more familiar with how it's very different with working with clears than it is with regular resin. Because regular resin, you can paint over, you can fill in scratches and all that stuff. With clear, it's a little bit trickier. So <clears throat> let's get set up and then what we'll do is we'll kind of go over some of the things you got to work and think about plus what I'm going to be doing with my kit and how we're going to change things up a little bit here and there. Okay so you can see the figure is in the base and what it is is the flames come around her like so and what's going to what should happen is if you want to do this kit like on the box some of these clear resin pieces sort of connect together and they go into the hair in the back of her so some of these pieces are supposed to sort of like you know connect up around here or something and they sort of kind of go into the base personally for my kit i don't like that idea so i actually as you saw in my past video i filled in the areas around here and i re-sculpted the hair because i want to focus on the figure more blending into the base with my paintwork than the flame blending into her hair so that's going to be changing up <clears throat> now she comes with a dragon head that's down here for the clear resin and that's part of the storyline from the uh, Fire Elemental. So if you go on the Garage Kits websites and you read up uh, on the history of the characters and a little bit of the background, you'd understand that this dragon head is sort of like the storyline with her. But for me personally, for my build up, I don't want this head there because it takes away from her feet. I want to be able to see the whole figure. So I'm going to be removing this from my whole uh, project. But just to give you guys an idea, whatever I do on my clear resin around here, you pretty much have to do it to the head here if you were going to build it up. But the only thing that's different is they come with like dentures for the dragon's head. Now these are pretty much casted up like just typical dentures for like your mouth. The reason being is if this was casted up with the teeth already here, when you make a mold and you pop that mold out, you just would rip all those teeth out with the mold. So that's why a lot of like uh, casting of statues and stuff or like real bigger items are always like that. So that's something to keep in mind that when you build this up, you'd have to set up the dentures, clean them up, and be able to like sort of glue them in or epoxy them in at the end. <clears throat> now, the only thing with clear resin is uh, if you over sand it and you scratch it up, the problem is, is you gotta buff that back out because if you use very harsh sandpaper, you're basically just taking away the nice shine and smoothness of your kit. So you have to use like some really good uh, fine sandpapers like uh, what is it, maybe around like 300s, uh, 200s, and also going to like micro fine and ultra fine sandpapers like these 3M stuff. You can get these at like an auto parts store. Um, and also there's some buffing tools from your Dremel tool. We'll get over to that in a little bit later, but just keep that in mind that if you're going to sand up any little casting errors that are around the edging around here, don't use harsh sandpapers because what's gonna happen is you're gonna make your a nightmare. You're gonna have a nice good clear piece here but then when you go to paint over here, you'll see all these weird scratches. So we can uh, kind of go over that once we get into the garage on how to kind of take out some of these areas. But for right now, we just got to also plan how are we going to get these pieces on. Now, <clears throat> the other thing too is remember, if you break clear resin, if you snap a piece and you go to glue it back together, you're always going to see that glued piece there. Think of your car window. If your car window cracks and it starts to do a spider effect, you can never repair that. You could fill it in with some clear resin to stop it from cracking, but you're always going to see the crack there. So it's the same thing with clear resin. So that's why this is a little bit tricky in the sense that this back piece over here has this clear piece that was casted separately from here. So you can see this piece was casted separately or this piece goes over here. No, it goes to this one here. So the reason being is if they tried to cast this and mold it, all in one piece to go here it probably the clear resin would never make it to the top and it would be all these errors so they split these pieces up so this piece goes back here and then this piece is supposed to sort of connect to the hair like so somewhere around there but of course I'm not doing that so we don't have to worry about that much but if you were to build up your kit you probably would need like a two-part epoxy that's clear or maybe some glue and sort of fudge it together and then paint over it, it you got to try the best you can I've still never perfected clear resin yet either so it's always working out and trying new things but it's a little bit tricky now the other thing too is on this kit <clears throat> by making these pieces removable 
The problem I'm running into is uh, probably what happened is maybe the clear resin sort of warped a little bit. Or maybe what I got to do is I got to hit it with a blow dryer and blow these pieces back and sort of set reset them. Uh, because what happens is if you put this clear piece in flush, this piece over in the back sort of sticks up and it hits this piece from going in flush. So if you put this piece in flush like so, it pushes this front piece up. Now, if you build this all in one shot and you want to glue these in, you can do that. But me, I want to make uh, magnets on these. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to get to go in the garage and sort of re-drill out some of these areas around here, maybe some of these pieces around here. I might have to sort of, as you can see, probably like dremel out some of this rocket around here, or somewhere around here, just so I could get this piece flat. And so this piece comes in flat and then this piece comes in flat. And then once I get these pieces in flat where I need them to go, I might have to do some age work and then I also might have to do some uh, magnet work. So it's a little bit tricky, but I think once I get through this hump and I get these pieces situated, I can clean them up and I can get them set up. So basically it's uh, all set. I paint them up and then I just magnetize them at the end. So <clears throat> tricky, definitely a little bit of extra work. So with that being said, uh, these little pieces around here, we're probably just going to move these away from the whole rest of the item. Uh, we're going to focus on getting these clears on and cleaned up. And then uh, if we have time in the video, we're going to do the custom work in the front. And then once these pieces are pretty much set up, we can actually almost start painting up the item. And then at the end, we could do the last custom work around the edges, which is really tricky and time consuming. But if it works out, it should be a really cool ending of the project. So. Let's go get set up in the garage. We'll start working on these clear stuff and then uh, hopefully we'll get them magnetized too pretty soon. Okay, so going over a couple things in the garage, make sure you have safety goggles, uh, you know, masks so you don't bring in any of the stuff. You get set up with a, a vacuum cleaner like I normally do. And uh, some of the tools here is you have like a sandpaper 320, um, 220s, uh, even higher. Uh, then uh, I also have the regular fine sandpaper I use for a lot of my stuff now. This stuff is worn pretty well, so it's really soft. If you use new fresh stuff, you got a little bit more grit to it. Um, we also have some Dremel tools here where you have a, a little bit of a wheel sandpaper that you screw on at the tip here. You can use this stuff as well to really sand some stuff down, except if you over sand, you go through these pretty fast. So it's always a pain screwing those out. And then we have buffing tools from uh, your Dremel tool with a little bit of a buffing area like clay stuff. Uh, basically, the idea is just to go around these edges and clean these up to make sure they're not any caked up and stuff. Now you can see some errors in here, there's little bubbles, but that's not the end of the world. You can't really get rid of them, it's just a casting error. Uh, but I mean, you know, it's once you paint it up, you probably really won't even notice. Um, <clears throat> we're going to sort of sharpen up some of these areas on the tips and kind of blend them around, so we'll do that as well. So the idea right now is I'm gonna clean up the edges and go through there, so like I said, if you want to use sandpaper first you can use like a 320 and what you could do is you could kind of go around the error sort of take it out and then if you start to see that you're scratching it up too much you can start using the good sandpapers that are like nice and fine and buff them and then if you really need to buff it out at the end you got to be very careful with your Dremel tool you probably shouldn't have it go too fast that's a little too fast we'll take that down and then you could sort of buff it out. Now you can even just buff out the error too if it's not that bad. You just kind of go around. I mean, if, if you really want to be lazy, you could kick this up, but you got to be careful you don't break a piece. And you could sort of buff it out like that. And then you would have to use that ultra fine and other sandpaper to really get it nice and buffed and nice and smooth again. So the only problem with doing that is you'll melt this and burn these very fast. But if you want to be lazy, you could do that. If not, whatever. Now, <clears throat> you can see this piece up here. This is that piece that was kind of like flat. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably use this tool here or even really some stronger sandpaper and sort of kind of get this to like a flaming tip point somewhere. And then after that, buff it back down like that tool and stuff like that. So it's going to be tedious work. It's just a matter of going throughout your whole piece, cleaning them up, uh, getting them nice and buffed. Um, 
You can, I guess, use like the buffing compound if you want. The only problem I've run into with clear resin with the buffing compound is if your piece is fairly rough in certain areas, that buffing compound starts to get caked up in cracks and scratches, and then it's very hard to get that stuff out. So typically, I don't really use the buffing compound too much. I just use the tool, and I'll just go through like these pieces here. Uh, like you can see, this piece is pretty much worn down, but I got so many in my uh, box of uh, Dremel parts because I go through Dremels all the time. Uh, you just pretty much buff them down and get all this stuff done. So that's just a little bit of a quick tip. I'm going to just go through this and buff this all out. And then once I get this buffed up and it's kind of where I want it to be, we're going to start focusing on getting these into the base and situated. And then from there, just keep plugging away. Alright, so I uh, did some of my Dremel work and I got all the clear pieces uh, installed. So what happened was, first this piece has to go in first because then each piece lines up on top of it. So, I got this lined up and what happened was, I thought maybe I could heat set this and I tried doing it. But the problem was, every time I heat set it and I sort of pushed it back and I threw it in like a cup of water, like ice water to kind of freeze it in place. It just, some reason it just kept coming back. It wasn't working. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to chop this up here, sand this down, chop up this rock, so this piece will kind of go on to it. Uh, when I did that, it turned out I had to chop up some of the back of this piece a little bit more. So when I say chopping it up, I used my Dremel tool, I chopped it up, and then I fine sanded it back down smooth. So now these pieces go in pretty well. Then I went to this piece. Now this piece gave me the most trouble because what happened is it was lining up to the point where it was going upwards like this. So what I had to do is I had to Dremel out these circles a little bit wider. I had to Dremel out around this piece here, around there, and I had to take out this rock. So now this piece goes in there fairly well. But what I'll have to do is once we get the magnet set up, I can use some aves and sort of clean up the edging and stuff. Because when you turn her around the base, there's a little bit of a gap now with this rock that I chopped up. Probably can't see it in the camera, but we'll figure it, we'll work on it later. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I Dremel out all these nice little tiny holes in these pieces here. Uh, not too deep and stuff. So I have these magnets here. Uh, the idea is we're going to put some semi-strong N52 magnets into here. Let them set up. And then what we'll do is we'll try to put some stronger magnets in here if, I can, uh, if we have enough meat in these holes. And then uh, this way when we're done these will just snap into place like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some of my two-part epoxy here. Now when you kind of mix this up, it's kind of clear, but over time it may yellow a bit. But that's okay, we don't really need to worry about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix that up, put a drop in here, put a drop in there, throw in a magnet, sort of like set up the pieces so they kind of just like dry like so. And then uh, once they're dried by tomorrow, I can sort of like flat sand it a little bit just to smooth out the areas. And then what I could do is I could work out magnets into the base. So it's uh, a little bit tricky. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain, but it worked out. And the other thing I did was I sort of dremeled out the tip up here just to kind of like uh, give this a little bit more of a fire loop. Uh, I did the same thing with uh, this piece. I think it was this one, right? Uh, 
I'll take it right here. Yeah, right here. What I did is since this was flat, I kind of just chopped that up and sanded it down to make it look more like the flame. And then I sort of did the same thing with this over here because, like I said, we're not connecting to the hair. But one of the things, too, you, you can uh, help, because I primed this up, and I'm putting this in and out. When you pull this out, you can see where the primer is hitting areas on the uh, clear resin. So it gives you a better idea of how snug it is and if you need it to work out a little bit of an area. But you got to think, too, once you paint this up and you put it in, that part's going to sort of scrape that. But it's kind of like the nature of the beast when you need to use removable parts. So I'm going to get all these magnets installed, which is kind of like a tedious job right now. And then uh, tomorrow we can start working on getting these attached to the base and then start cleaning up these areas. And when I'm cleaning up these areas, I'm gonna kinda of sorta of bring this cracking sculpting over to here because I want all this filled in so we see the legs. Okay, so uh, what I did yesterday was I mixed up some of my uh, two-part epoxy and slowly what I did is I put in a little bit of drops of it in here on each side and then I dropped in a magnet and I let that cure up overnight and then what I did is I sanded these down to make them flat. So now I have these other magnets here, which I'm going to start setting these up like so. So the idea is these are going to be in the base and then these just get magnetized on and they stay. So the way we're gonna have to work it is we're gonna have to start with this side first, let this cure up and then we'll have to start, then we'll do this side and then we'll do this side. So the way this is, is because these are hollow, some of them are not hollow and some of them are, it's gonna be a little tricky. So I'm gonna mix up some magic sculpt and we're going to put some in here, we're going to put some in there. I'm just going to try not to push the magic sculpt all the way forward because what I want to do is I want the magic sculpt to sort of kind of stop like right about halfway through the magnet and then what it'll, that'll help me set this up later. Like if I pop this out after the magic stuff cures, maybe the magnets will come with it or maybe they'll actually stay in place. We'll see how it works out. But if they come out, I can actually just dab in some glue, put them back in, and then fill a magic sculpt around the rest of them, and then they should lock into place. The idea is I want the magnets to be as touching as that as far as possible, and I want them to kind of secure right about there. But looking at them, like one's kind of at an angle and the other one's at an angle, so I think what'll happen is once it's secured, I'll be able to pop this right out. So we'll see how it works. So like I said, I'll start with this one this morning. I'll put some masking tape around the piece just to kind of hold it in place. Let it cure up for about six, seven hours by tonight. And then we'll pop it out, see how that works. And then uh, what I could do is maybe before I go to bed, I can actually do this side. And then when I wake up in the morning, I could do this side. And then these should all be magnetized and set up pretty well. And then we could start doing all the sculpt work around the area. Alright, so all the pieces are magnetized and they look pretty good. This one doesn't really wobble, a little bit, not much. This one wobbles a tiny bit, but this one is the one I'm more concerned about. Even though it connects on it very well, as you can see it wobbles back. Now, looking at the pieces, there is a little bit of a gap of uh, between each some of these stuff. And plus I had to cut some of these rocks, so this kind of comes back. So what I did is I mixed up some fresh aves. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, A's on the bottom of this area here, put some over here, make sure these pieces are kind of like pretty solid and there's no gaps. And then I'm also going to sculpt the front in here because I want this to be all blended in with the bottom over here to here. So I'm going to do my own little take around here, maybe a little extra rocks, build them up a little bit. Uh, so this way we'll be able to see the figure and everything will work good. It's just this piece kind of worries me a little bit here just uh you know like if by accident you go to pop her out of the base and you actually hit this and maybe the magnets kind of go and then it falls and breaks i really want to make sure that these pieces are locked in really tight that i actually have to pop out myself but i mean they are connecting very well and the magnets look good so right now it's just a matter of just doing some tedious stuff building around here now if any of this aves gets stuck onto this stuff and it kind of gets some red on there it's going to be good and bad at the same time one this stuff is going to be painted red orange, so if there's a little bit of staining, I could probably get away with it. But what I can do is I could sit there and I could buff off any, uh, you know, use residue on these pieces at the bottom or anything there, which isn't a problem. But I'm going to have to use some baby powder around here anyway, because when I put these pieces on, I don't want it to stick to the base. I want to make sure that I get a nice flush piece between clear resin and regular resin there. So it'd be kind of hard. Maybe you could see it from there. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a gap. So I just want to get rid of all that gap. Um, I'm not really sure why I did that. I mean, it's it's like flush on the other parts, but it's not flush there. It's probably maybe because the resin was a little bit warped. But it's not the end of the world. You can always fix it with a little bit of extra sculpt work and stuff and just have fun with the project. So I'm going to get this pulled off now. We're going to start cleaning up these gaps. And then uh, we'll work on this area here and hopefully... Once this is all done, I can see if I need to clean up anything around here around the body. And then from there, just start doing more fine tuning and cleaning. And then hopefully, we can almost start paint work. And then uh, at the end, we're going to do the customization of the lava falling off the sides. All right, so it's been about an hour or so and everything's looking good. I popped these off just to make sure they're not sticking and that uh, the baby powder is doing its magic. So we're looking pretty good. So the apes is still a little bit soft. So if I needed to, I could go in here and retweak some stuff. But what I did is I'm looking on the side and I put a mark here, a mark here, uh, one here, and I think one here. So there's four spots where I don't like this gap between the resin and the clear resin. Actually, there's another one right here, too, which I'm going to sort of fill in right now. Uh, just mix up a little tiny Aves, do it off camera, and get that fixed. So hopefully by tomorrow, 
what I could do is wash this down, get all the baby powder off of it, and clean up the clear resin some more, and we should be pretty good. Uh, this seems like it's seamed up pretty well, this little spot around here. I did all this little sculpting of there. Uh, and other than that, we're looking pretty good. So the main thing now is fill up these gaps and make sure that these clear resins don't stick to any of this age just in case within the next uh, hour before it really cures up. So I'll do these spots right now off camera. I'll throw some baby powder on it, put it in a garage, let it cure up for the night, and then tomorrow come back, clean up, and then uh, start really fine-tuning with around in here, how she sits in here and go around the base some more, make sure that's cleaned up, start cleaning up the clear resin, and then other than that, we're almost there. Okay, so I had a chance to get into the garage yesterday and just really prime up the item and buff everything and clean everything out. I went over the whole entire piece. There's still a lot more to go, but I got the majority of stuff that I can see without uh, you know, using lighting angles to find stuff. So when I say by like that is, say you take out your figure, and you put it. You have your light from the, your uh, ceiling coming down. You can actually see stuff. Or if you have light coming in this direction, you look here and you can see stuff. Or maybe if you have a spotlight, you could turn it around the item like on my desk, and you could just look and see if there's anything you're missing on it, and do it with the base and the arms and all that stuff. Uh, once I did that, I pretty much got all the majority of the heavy stuff done and cleaned up. And there's a couple more little small things here and there I'm going to buff out. It's just a matter of putting putty on it, letting it dry, sand it down, hitting it with primer again, and really smoothing stuff out. I also did uh, the base too as well, and I did all the clear pieces. So I went around and I buffed up as much of this as possible. I got all that baby powder out. I buffed up all the areas here and there. I still got to go over it one more time on all the pieces, and I also did it with the base. So we're pretty much ready to go. At this point, we're almost ready to start paint work. Uh, it's just a matter of tedious fine tuning stuff. So when you get at this stage of the game, try not to rush it. Just kick on some music, a movie, some YouTube videos or whatever makes you comfortable. Sit down for a few hours and just keep doing all this tedious tiny work. Just keep cleaning errors, uh, getting out little gunky parts maybe around the dress areas from casting. Maybe there's a little spot in the hair you don't like, you want to buff that out. And just keep going over and over and over to the point where you're like, okay, I think I got as much as I can out of it and we're ready to go. Now, while doing that, you should also think about how you're going to paint up your items. And uh, I run into this issue when I started the hobby where I started working on the item, I'm ready to paint, and I'm starting to paint the item. And then I realize like, okay, I just painted it, where do I put it? How do I set this up? Because if I lean in here, it might fall over and then you get all this dust and stuff on it. So... You want to think about how your pieces are going to be set up to paint before you start doing it. Some people use like uh, nails or like peg system where they'll dremel stuff into areas and they'll have it set up like these here, uh, painting up. Other people might use uh, some kind of clamps. I've seen people use like a string system where they'll paint something and they'll have a string or like a metal rod holding it and it's drying like so, like hanging down. So there's many different ways you could do it. It all depends on which makes you feel comfortable and which you think is better for you or however you've seen someone else do it. So we know the figure can go into a block of wood already because I have that set up. We have the arms set up with these rods so those are ready to go. Now my main issue is how am I going to paint up these clear pieces without them falling over and stuff like that. So what I want to do is I'm thinking is we'll pop her out and then we'll put her on her block of wood and then we have a couple options. One, I can actually paint these up and then do something with like a, a, like a hook system where it kind of hooks underneath here and it dries. Or since there's magnets under here, I have these uh, planks of uh, metal steel. You get these at like Home Depot and like the screw area racks and you can just cut them. You can actually put like, you know, magnet pieces on this and paint, but since this one kind of falls over, I can't do that. But this one right here might be able to work where I can actually put that on there and paint it and it's really not gonna go anywhere. I can actually like paint this up and leave it on the shelf and let it sit there and it could dry like that. So that's something to think about. I don't know if this one will do it. I guess we'll check now. So that one might stay whole too. So maybe these two I can paint up and then let them sit on there. But I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to paint up this one, 
let it kind of sit on the base like so. I'll paint up this one, let that one sit on the base, but I'll probably do this one separate and let it sit on a thing like that. So I'll be able to paint these three like so, let them dry out for like a day or two, and then I can work on the base. So what I might do is wrap up the base now while it's got, uh, you know, just primer on it. I'll just use regular saran wrap, wrap it up. I'll get these going, paint these up, and then once these are painted up and dried, I can actually put them away on a shelf somewhere, like nice and, uh, you know, set up on like some metal, so it's kind of like not out of way, it's not leaning on itself, and let them dry, and I could go over everything else and paint those up. So it's just a matter of thought process. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to fine tune everything else. We're going to come back, I think I'm going to paint up all these clear resin pieces first. We'll close out the video after that, and then we're really going to focus on painting her up. Uh, She's going to be a whole video herself, maybe two. We'll see how that works out because I really want to do some cool stuff with the figure. Plus, i got to use some other types of paints to get a specific look on the part of the dress. And then once all these pieces are done, the figure is done, then we can really focus on the base. The base is going to be a lot of fun because we're going to do some really cool custom work with lava going over. That's going to take some time. It's going to be a little costly because some of the material I use, but I think the end results will look pretty cool. So let's go get that cleared up, uh, get all this pretty much fine-tuned, anything else I'm missing, and then we're going to really get into the clear resin pieces. Okay, we're going to do the clear pieces now. There's a little bit tricky. It's easy, but it's tricky at the same time. It's just the way clear works. So what I did is I set these up with clamps. You get these clamps at Home Depot. They're not that expensive. So what I did is I clamped up one circle piece with the magnet. Just enough to sort of hold it, but not enough to crush the clear. So you want to be careful with that. And I wrapped up each handle in saran wrap because I don't want to get all the handles caked up with a residue of paints and primers and stuff like that. So once your clear pieces are all buffed up, they're sanded and they're ready to go, the best thing I found is using a Dupacolor clear primer. This stuff is really great. What happens is you put a nice good clear coat of primer on here, and then what happens is it helps any paint bond to it better. I find that if you use any kind of acrylic paint or clears directly onto your resin, what happens is it starts to bleed and it doesn't really get a nice even coat. So you need something there to help bond the stuff. But in the beginning you might say, oh man, it's cloudy, it's not working. Kind of at the end of the thing when you do your final clear coat, it sort of brings it all together and it gets it really clear. I don't really know why it does that, it's just the way these paints work and it's kind of what I've come up with. So. We're going to do the primer now in the garage. We'll come back. It should dry fairly fast. This stuff doesn't really take that long to dry. And then we're going to use a Garage Kits transparent, uh, true red and uh, bright yellow as the transparencies on here. Now, this is sort of the tricky part. You can't overspray your clears onto it because then your stuff starts to bleed because this is like kind of like watery transparent like colors. So you got to sort of, what I do is I use my blow dryer and I sort of heat up the clear resin, not to the point where it's like melting, but just enough for it to get warm. And then you spray your clears onto it and it sort of helps cure it right away. And then what I'll do is I'll stop the clear, I'll let it sit for like a second, and then I'll hit it with the blow dryer again. Just enough where it's kind of drying the paint, but it's not bleeding it and it's not pushing it all over the place. Because if you overspray, you get bleeding. So it's kind of like you got to mist a little bit blow dry it, sort of mist a little bit, blow dry it, and kind of go back and forth. You gotta find that middle ground that helps you cure the paint while you're doing it. This is what I've come up with. And then once your clears are all done and it's, I'm gonna let it dry for the night after I'm done, I'll come back tomorrow in the morning because right now we're kinda of at the end of the night. It's very hot outside, so you don't wanna do your clear coat yet. It's good to wake up in the morning so it's kind of like a little bit cool. You Maybe you'll be around like that 70, 72 weather. You can go in and you can actually hit it with the dupe color clear, kind of clear it all out, and then it really just makes it pop and really makes the whole piece kind of see through and like almost glass. It's just the way it works with this type of stuff in this process. So you'll see how it kind of unfolds. So I'm gonna go in the garage now. I'll hit it with the primer. It'll dry probably in like 10 minutes or so. We'll come back and we'll start doing the clears on it. And then hopefully tomorrow morning we can kind of seal them up and they'll be done and out of the way. Okay, so we got the yellow on. You don't have to go super crazy because if you do one side of yellow, it's still gonna show through the other, but I still like to kind of do both sides to get some colors on there. Now, as far as the red, this is lava. This is not like really fire. I mean, if you wanna make it look like fire, you can, but we're kind of going more lava-like. 
So it's going to be more of an orangey red. So I'm going to mix like the true red with some of the yellow in my cup and do more of an orangey up top and then sort of kind of blend it down. I don't want a pure red up top. That's not what we're going for. This is kind of supposed to represent lava and not really fire. So that's something you want to think about. So you want to go on like a... You know, uh, the websites look up some pictures of lava splashing. It'll give you an idea of how, like, the inside is kind of, like, really hot yellow going out to sort of, like, an orangey color with not really much red. It all depends on, you know, where you want to go with it. So keep that in mind when you're painting up something like this. Look up reference pictures because just because you think it's a fire, you could go opposite direction where you think maybe the top is yellow and the bottom's red, and that's not really how it works. So always do your reference pictures online as much as you can. So like I said, hot yellow in the center at the bottom going up to more of an orangey up top with a little bit of red. So we don't want to do pure red, mix it in with some of the yellow and get some more of an orange. Alright, so I got it to where I want it. It's got a nice deep yellow at the base and it goes up to the orangey red up top. Uh, at one point I was sort of stopping the red because I think it was becoming too much. But I think this is kind of where I really wanted it to be. I think it's going to work out pretty good. As you saw, when you first start doing it, you really got to let that paint and that transparency sort of start bonding to the primer. If you don't, there was actually some spots where it was starting to bleed. So you got to kind of let it get in there and you got to blow dry it. And then as it starts to bond and you get a nice coat, then you go a little bit heavier but not much. And then afterwards, as you saw at the end, I was able to do a lot more freedom with it because it was bonding a little bit better. But you still can't go overboard because it's still going to bleed. But since there's so much yellow base there, it started working out a lot better. I had to turn it around and get in different angles because if you spray at one angle, you'll get a lot of red. But when you turn the item, you'll see sort of a clear resin. So you sort of got to go around a little bit of the piece to go there. Now, at this point you might look at it, it's still a little bit shiny, it's still wet. With clear transparencies, I like to let them cure for a while because if you hit it with the blow dryer, in the sense you're clear, you're drying the outside shell but not the underneath area. So if you spray a lot of clear onto your item and then you sort of blow dry it, you're pretty much, think of it like as an M&M, the outside becomes a shell but the underside still st stays fairly soft. And that's kind of a bad thing to do because you can run into issues later on with like masking or if you go to grab it and you sort of pull it off the piece. So it's something like at this point, I want to let it dry natural overnight and just kind of walk away from it. Just let it dry, let it do its thing. It really kind of cure up by tomorrow. It's, we're, you know, we're in the summer anyway. It's like, you know, 90s out. So it's going to dry up pretty well naturally and I'd rather it do that way. So this way by tomorrow morning I could wake up and we could do our clear coat. So just keep these things in mind whenever you uh, do clear coat. Now one other thing too is if your item has a clear piece on it and you need to mask that clear piece off to do some solid paints, never ever ever use saran wrap on clear transparency paints because what happens is this stuff, uh, saran wrap, sort of starts to kind of like react to it and sort of start creating all these little wrinkles into your paints and then especially if your items are very tacky and not dry when you pull off the saran wrap it will rip off all your clear transparency so something to keep in mind if you're going to mask off transparencies especially if you do a nice uh, thick coat like sort of like i did you're going to want to use some fresh silly putty no silly putty that's used because what happens is some of those uh paint particles in your silly putty might get stuck into your clear piece so clear Resin pieces are tricky and you need to take your time and also be aware of masking them and stuff. But since these don't have to be masked up, these are just pretty much, you know, just clear them and then you pop them onto the base and you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about it. But like if, you know, say the hand has a clear piece in the hand and you had to attach it to paint it and all this other stuff, keep that in mind. So we're going to let this dry up tonight. We'll come back tomorrow and we will clear it up.
Okay, so this would be a good chance to close out the video. Uh, we, you can pretty much see how all this worked out. We got nice, good, clear coats on these pieces. It's been about two days since I uh, cleared them up in the garage, and they cured up very well. You want to make sure you always use brands of paint that you've either tested on other items or you work with in the past. Uh, I've used clear paints in the past from different companies and different brands and I find out that they never cure correctly or they say tacky forever. Sometimes that could be either it's a reaction between the colored clears or the plastic clear reacting to the other clear. So I know I've done this in the past where I know if I use Dupacolor clear primer on the clear uh, resin, do a colored paint of either garage kits or maybe some other brand like Tamiya or something, let it dry and then use this on top of that, I don't get a reaction. But I have in the past tried like maybe uh, using this primer on an item, doing uh, some clear, but maybe some of this primer showing because I didn't hit all the clear colored areas and then I use a different clear on top of that and I get a reaction. So you always want to make sure you test items whatever you can. If you buy a kit and you only have so many clear pieces, Get yourself maybe like a plastic spoon, uh, maybe you have a broken statue, or maybe if you just want uh, to go to the hobby store, get some clear resin, make a couple different castings and test some stuff. Uh, you know, you just want to make sure you know that your chemicals are not going to react. There's nothing worse than doing all this paint work and then at the end you realize that something is tacky, it's not curing correctly, and it just, it just gives you a nightmare. The other thing too is just to be sure, it may not be your paint, it could be the resin. So say you primed up an item, say you did uh, also you did the clear primer here and you paint it up, but there's a little area that always stays wet. No matter how many times you sand it down and you kind of clear it again or you hit paint with it, it starts getting tacky and stuff. That means it's the resin is not cured correctly. Like uh, when you mix A and B resin together and then all of a sudden you know, you're hitting it with uh, primers and colored paints and stuff and that one little area keeps getting tacky and it's always staying like wet and you can like stick your fingernail in it and it gets mushy. That means the resin's not uh, cured. That can happen with clear resin and regular resin. So that's another thing to keep in mind. You know, sometimes you get these kits in the mail and you know, you think, oh, I'll just pull out a box and start painting right away. If you're starting to get tackiness or your paints are never curing from primer upwards to either your primer, your paint, to your clear coats, it could be the resin, or if the resin and primer cured correctly and there's no, uh, you know, like you see on my base right now, there's no like wet spots or anything, and then say I go and do like uh, some paint on it in a clear coat, and then all of a sudden I'm getting like tackiness, it could be the paint. So these are things to keep in mind whenever you're working with clear resin and you're doing like this type of stuff or regular resin. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there for you guys, just in case you're having an issue. Uh, it's sometimes it's resin, sometimes it's paints. Another thing I'll mention is sometimes if you buy cheap paints, you get what you pay for. Sometimes I've run into the past like, ah, you know, this can of primer is uh, $2 less than this can or this clear coat of car paint is, ah, it's a $3 cheaper, I'll get this one. Yeah, you run into issues like that. And also if you mix brands, if you use Dupacolor with Krylon or Krylon with Dupacolor, uh, maybe Rust-Oleum with Krylon. If you're doing mixing the match in a paint of different brands, you can run into cracking, uh, you know, tackiness, uh, you know, just it, it, stick with the brands always and uh, try not to venture out to other brands unless you've done testing. So just wanted to throw that out there for you. Hopefully you guys like the way the clear resin came out. Hopefully it gave you a lot of good information. So next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start focusing on the skin tone of the figure. She's pretty much ready to go. We're going to focus on painting her up, doing some really cool techniques with her skin on certain areas that I wanted to change up. And then after that, we'll work on her hair, her outfits, and all that. And then the very last uh, video, what we'll do is the base because we're going to do some really cool custom work, which is going to take some time, but I think it'll look cool at the end. So thanks for watching, and we'll be back with the next video soon.